Now we're getting back to them chili crickets again. Those flavorful chili crickets. As I said, I was wondering whether or not we're going to have a little cooler winter this time, a little quicker. It seems to be coming on us. And the crickets don't seem to care. I would have thought they would, but they don't care. They don't want to get warmed up by doing something. And that's going to be, uh, again, the silence. Our uh, metaphorical silence is going to be our downfall, ultimately. If anybody has a thought about living a better condition in the world in the history of man, it's not really going to pull, be pulled off. We're going to be getting is what we gave. As a, <laughs> as Squire Franklin told us, or told the woman actually, on the steps. Before I forget, this is BTW RLM 292. For those of you on the past cast, broadcast, last cast, recast, whatever cast, That'll get you to the, uh, search that number out, and it'll get you to the content that I would use uh, in the future. And uh, you can get back to what I was reading, and you can read it, you can do the study. And that just gets you the start, those of you that want to. I can't really touch in depth. If you think you're going to listen for a few minutes and and get what I'm saying, that's going to be impossible. I don't know what else to say about that. I try to wind through many subject matters throughout a broadcast in order to inform you. It really doesn't matter where you want, what your interest is. Uh, throughout the world, this is really an integrated condition. And uh, wherever your interest is, we can use that to get you back involved. Uh, what they don't want you, they, the ubiquitous they, those silent and fun your face transparent ones, running the whole show. It's amazing how that they're doing this, but running the whole show right in front of everyone's face, and everyone's helpless uh, to stop it, it seems. Well, they think they're helpless. And that just shows uh, how good the captors have controlled our minds and what for whatever i don't i don't even put it it's not just edge it's not just government education we we at some point we have to grow up folks we have to come to terms with what we what isn't working and, and figure out do we want to fix it and some of us give up i guess I, i'm just not wired quite that way whether or not i do it actually right uh, to go after what what ails what i see what ails me around me and the people that i know I don't know if I'm doing that right or wrong. There's no manual for it. So my expectations got violated many, many decades ago. I started looking at that, and we're here today. And I survived that uh, that um, that encounter many decades ago, somehow. And I'm here to discuss it for anybody that really wants to listen. A lot of people want to listen. Do you want to then take the next action? I see lots of people. It's becoming an annoyance. Lots of people that claim that they know. Lots of people that want to claim that they're learned. They believe that their philosophy, believe that they, oh, the trivium saved them. Uh, and it, it does nothing. The knowledge is absolutely useless if it doesn't get into practice. And knowing a thing is not uh, solving a thing if it's a problem. As I was pointing out, there was a, a meme picture that went through. I guess this is what, some, some big day in the World War I. The most uh, stupid human tricks. I saw, heard a video of, of the so-called silence of the ending of the war. It was all fabricated, and it all ends at the same time. I don't even know if that was fabricated. I assume it's pretty pretty close to accurate when everyone shuts their guns off. But did the beginning to the end to the point of when they're fabricating the end of the war, it's all uh, planned, it's all uh, scheduled, manufactured consent. From the beginning to the end, the ending, all ended the same. People knowing the the end of the war is coming, and they all shut their guns off at the same time. Instead of saying, oh, the end of the war is coming, let's just stop killing people. Stupid human tricks, tricks, folks. It's manufactured consent. They got us over a barrel, and we haven't figured that out. And I come every Sunday to try and tell you, here, here's how they're doing this. Here, this is what's going on. The manufactured consent has a method. It's identifiable. You can stop it, too. But you have to step up to do it. You can't do this by the, like the, the cricket method's not going to work. It said the power of silence in that audio at the end of this, the, the war, the sea, the sea scene of the war. The, it was the power of the crickets that, that means the manufacturers and continues the whole thing. Till this time, no one's identified the stupid human trick that we keep on being uh, led by the nose into at various levels of destruction, whether or not so so-called world war, a war to end all wars. You know, if they work that hard on making peace, maybe maybe the world would be a better place, but they don't. And we don't insist on it, I guess. That's the other part. And you've known I, I'm not a pacifist, so it's not about that either. It's about getting our head on straight, I guess. Get our head out of the uh, 
acme behind the woodshed acme bucket of sand and start actually coming to terms with the reality that we've been handed what we've been grown bro, we've been b born into so you can be interested in that you can turn away you can be not interested uh, the everywhere you in my mind ever look around and what i how i perceive you're being played everywhere I don't know where everyone's looking to look away because I don't. There's really no place you can look away to not see this stuff. It's just you are not engaging in the right, seeing it to engage. You're not interested. You're disinterested. You've decided it. That's just an excuse because for all as much as you might have your thoughts about how the world is supposed to be and how much better it would be in a different place, that isn't going to be reality because that's not reality. It takes an integrated uh, pro. You're going to have people coming against you. You're just going to agree to have that happen against you if it's wrong. Whatever that wrong is, you'll agree because you don't resist it. And, uh, and then we find there's a proper way. And it's not too far off with the basics of how we were so-called educated are, of how you write, how you the grammar you use, your, the language that you use. And then you learn the, ang the language is being twisted, so you just like learn a second language. People, people have found, uh, believe that they can't do any of that, and I don't understand what it is. They get more and more frustrated listening to people for the most part. And every time you bring up, here, well, why don't you try this? Well, oh, no, it's too much. I got to do this. I got to do that. So everything other than what they really need to do. This is a, our decision. Everyone wants to also turn around. It seems not everyone. Take it. It sounds like absolutes. Lots and lots of people speak the same way. As soon as you put a specific thing in front of someone, they everyone, everyone will go to generalities that will evade an excuse. Well, other people. It's not about other people. It's about you. Each one of you. And this is how the system has figured it out. You will walk. You will come. You will make yourself a herd in avoiding your uh, what you're supposed to do. Uh, yes, even in the so-called alternative media, the so-called alternative minds, the so-called enlightened ones, the awoke ones, they're all herding in their own way. All the isms and the ists and all the uh, exalted enlightenment I see on the on the social media is all hurting in the same direction. Uh, to my mind, in fact, it, keep, it keeps occurring to me. The, the one picture I've seen that seems to be the truth is this thing called this new uh, meme going around the NPC, the non-player character. Uh, they're all gray, gray faces. And the, the only thing, a difference I can see between them is depending on which which direction you face, the L slips from your forehead onto your nose, and it makes your nose either left facing or right facing. The the most important one I saw was it didn't go far enough. It said Republicans and Democrats are sitting in the same picture. What I looked at it said it doesn't matter what your ism is, it doesn't matter what your ist is, it doesn't matter what your party is. Those are just two of all of the characters in the play that are all non-players. And your non-players, that's the silence I'm talking about. If you're not in it and addressing it, you're the NPC character. You can talk all you want about what you believe, but you're not going to engage. And if you don't engage, whoever's got the plan running, whoever's running their mission and objective, they're winning. And I would hope that most of us would step up and for ourselves, folks, and then hopefully your loved ones. That's the next thing. Just do something, something. Anyway, so I'm going to move on here, go on, because I got lots. I always love build up my tabs. I got too much I build up in a week to talk about, just to show you it doesn't matter where you go. Whether or not we can do some of this, anything with it, I don't know, but we can at least take a cognizance of the reality, not make up stories, and not use it as also as, a, oh, that gives me an excuse not to do anything. But it, it wasn't. I don't talk too much about uh, politics, so-called, although some things, sometimes it sounds like it. So I'm trying to point out any politics is really a method of observation and or something you might be able to try to do. So I try to bring, okay, what are we going to do about some of this nonsense? Now, so I wasn't, I, I just got this, this report came up this morning. I wasn't going to speak about this politics side, but it, it gives us an insight of what the problems are, uh, why the problems exist, and the continuing action of it, and it's how it's going to continue. And it also most tells us that we better get locally active to be able to start to make adjustments. Because even though we can make the excuse that they don't care about us, the government doesn't care about us, and so I won't even deal with it, these people are ruling your life. I don't care how you figure it out. I don't care what pathway you, you, you're you ignorant of that you don't know is there. They have pathways from all these people in the news that, that, uh, the, that rule over everybody into your life locally. And at some point, you're going to have to cut that, that conduit. You're going to have to chop that up. Or you, you just be a complainer, the whiner and the complainer. I, I don't really know. It's not my rule, folks. It's just the way it works. 
that uh, this came up. If you want to know the basics of the problem in the United States of America right now, uh, relative to the ring that the United States government has put in our nose as a people, uh, we can see it right here in, in quite a uh, quite a nice little package. Trump award gives the highest U.S. civilian honor, uh, the Medal of Freedom, to a top GOP donor. Now that title alone, uh, 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 literally, I can make programs after all this, but that program alone. Tell uh, that excuse me that uh, title alone tells me a ton uh, a part of the problem, but it's a truth, and it's in the Constitution that this Trump is a Republican. If you look in the Constitution, he's to promote his party when he's in there, and so put that roll that around in your pipe a little bit if if you're a pipe smoker, or, or maybe roll that into your blunt as you smoke it, or maybe into your incense burner. That the president is, this thing, whole thing was start out as a division, a party problem. And so, uh, but this, so now the Medal of Freedom, you know, the word civilian, did I, I've told you about this one before. They reference civilians. Civilians is from the perspective of a military con condition, just like I've been telling you. Now, you're not Americans, you're not, a, you're not even a United States person, you're not a citizen, nothing. You're a civilian. Now, if you go look at the definitions for civilian, one of the definitions is attorneys. And so, we get, we can look at some nuances here. I won't do it. I'm just going to point out some observations. Again, I just point you out, here's some things, uh, here's a reality going on. Are you aware of it? Are you, are you going to put this into your calculations when you go to do anything? Once you've chosen to do anything, are you going to do, are you going to understand the dynamic? A, a civilian, this is from a military consequence and honor, a medal of freedom given to a top GOP donor, should tell you a ton all by itself. Well, we go read a little bit of the report here. The United States President Donald Trump awarded the Medal of Freedom. I just can't even get almost beyond that point. The Medal of Freedom was issued to a political donor. Should tell you tons, folks. To the highest civilian honor in the United States, to seven individuals Saturday, both living and dead, one of whom was has been the biggest donor to, to the Republican Party. So the president is doing his constitutional duty to really support the party, isn't he? Miriam Adelson has been was awarded the Medal of Freedom. She is married to Sheldon Adelson, a billionaire, Las Vegas casino magnate, and another GOP mega donor. Casino, folks. I mean, this is just... This, this is an interesting play we're watching, all of this. The Adelsons recently contributed $113 million to GOP causes during the 2018 election cycle. Among those donations, the couple gave $25 million in July to the Senate Leadership Fund, $2 million in September to the ESA Fund, $3 million in the July and uh, September to a Republican Governor Association, and roughly $40 million between May and September uh, to the Congressional Leadership Fund, according to Politico. And I was going to say, is you're using these dollars, so-called debt instruments, that's all accounting G into GDP. That's the part of what you may not be seeing here. This is all uh, we'll see here in the, ro in the report what this honor of the Medal of uh, Freedom is about. And remember, like, they took the War Department and they changed it to the Defense Department after 1947. What was that, the year after 46, when they bu bureaucratized the whole government? reorganized it? Do you people stop and look at these reorganizations and then think about what that means when they do that stuff? How do you reorganize a, a constitutionally established government unless you're not in that government? And so they got this hybrid war going on and they pick and choose between the sides and we keep going. I mean, it's just on and on in my mind. I just look at this stuff and like, I don't know what anybody reads when they read these stories. And yes, I guess it could be all fake news. It could be the truth could be a lie. It doesn't matter. They're telling us something. How much of it is picked up by people? They also gave eighty-two million dollars. You understand the amount of money here, folks? I mean, I, I was told when I was a kid you couldn't count to a million all your life counting. And boy, we're so far beyond that stupid money now it, because it's not. It's a big black hole, big, uh, and it's on your back. It's the the full faith and credit of the United States, and that's somehow been given uh, license to be. Uh, stupid money now. It's just uh, this. This when they went. I told you when they went to derivatives in 2008, when they sanctioned fraud as money, it was over. It was over from the financial side. There's no really I, anybody. Uh, and part of me is uh, I look at these people who are tracking the, the lost trillions. 
And we find that they're just a, a best practices adjustment, uh, accounting adjustments. Uh, I, I don't know why we're counting anymore. It, it's just anyway. But uh, let's move, not move on too far. Uh, so lots of lots of bucks that that interest is going to support uh, this uh, political establishment. Way beyond anything I could even conceive, and it's going on. I don't know how, but there it is. So if you think I've got a handle on all this, I'm telling you I don't. How do, how do you even deal in all this? No, I can. I'm not stupid to it. I'm just saying, how do you really do this? And you don't really do it. You do it underneath a fiction, a complete fiction that we keep uh, even ignoring. We all. That, what does this mean to me? Well, it doesn't mean much of anything except these are the people that are making the rules and being influenced to do certain things in the world uh, in your name. And or and I told you there's a backlash. Like it's natural. There's going to be. Uh, a wave, a response. Again, you have a push, you're going to have a pull. You know, rockets. You push with a rocket, you push the rocket. You have a rocket engine and pushing one direction, you move it the other. It's all, I can go on and on about this stuff. This is just a natural response. So whatever's going on in the world, in your name, on your back, is coming back to you. And if they've learned to do it out there, they're doing it to you in your town. And I've explained the method there, but keep on going here. Again, I'm pointing this out today. This is like the... the what is one of the main problems in our country right now? And I'd rather I see people will talk about frivolous things instead of looking at some of this and saying, "Well, how how is this really reflecting back to where I live, right where I in my house? How does this work? How does this then reflect and give example to others that are also going to violate me for these principles that are really weren't supposed to cross the line if we were deleting in a limited form government and the truth of the failure, the truth of that might be we're not living in that anymore, which should take us a different thought, because now we have to understand, there's may, really, what are you going to do in that? Do you do anything? If you say no, you've agreed to this crime. Yeah, keep going. The president, here they tell us what it's about. The Presidential Medal of Freedom is the nation's highest civilian honor, which may be awarded by the president to individuals who have made especially meritorious contributions to the security or national interests of the United States, to world peace, and to culture, or other significant public or private endeavors, according to the White House. Well, when you understand who this uh, who this is being given to, for what, that's a mouthful what they just said, because we're going to have to look at what is the security and the national interest and the world peace that's supported here. Well, remember, they always give it a, co- a cover, a, a, a costume of, of acceptance. So we all go, oh, what a wonderful condition this is that you've given it. Remember now, they give it to Miriam, the wife, not not the guy who's the billionaire. At any rate, the White House justified the award to Adelson for her work in medicine and for the Jewish community. Miriam Adelson is a committed doctor, philanthropist, and humanitarian. Humanitarian, folks. Think about what they're saying here. Humanitarian. This is the UN, this is human rights, this is the animals, this is the thing that's subject to the state. A humanitarian, uh, a White House statement read, quote, with her husband Sheldon, she also established the Adelson Medical Research Foundation, which supports research to prevent, reduce, or eliminate disabling and life-threatening illness. Um, my mind boggles at how many people are also doing that in other areas, folks. But at any rate, let's focus. Sheldon Adelson has been uh, a major driver of the Trump administration Middle East policy, such as pushing for the United States Embassy to be moved to Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Others that received the Medal of Freedom for Saturday include Orrin G. Hatch, one of the longest-serving senators in history. Uh, think about whether this is good or bad, but here it is. Uh, Alan Page, a retired NFL player. Entertainer Elvis Presley, baseball legend Babe Ruth, the former Justice uh, Antonin, Antonin, Antonin Scalia, and Roger Staubach, I think it's Staubach, a half a, I think it's Staubach, a half a half Hall of Fame quarterback. That's Breads and Circus, it's mostly there, right? It's also a member of a, a particular branch of government that really hasn't done what it's supposed to do, really, to hold off things. Uh, so we, the tale is in this last paragraph. So let's go back up to what the main problem is, uh, supporting the move to Tel Aviv, supporting uh, the Jewish community. What about other communities, folks? Well, why is the politics of Jerusalem's movement even involved in a medal of freedom for U.S. individuals? What does that have to do with anything back over there in, in another country? 
and not even that in another land because again that country that they want to call is the is the land is not a state and it can't be the israelis because that's not the land that they claim the bible says they have the right to because they're not right of claim they have no blood i've told you this is the post 48 problem and the pre 48 problem but what is the national interest of the united states how can that meet world peace and these, these anomalies in this whole condition, and where this is all focused, tells us a ton about our country and how far off the track it really is. And I, I, okay, so now what do we do with it? Well, we're so far off of that on that track. That's one of the dimensional things. That's one way we're being done. But that leads us to say, well, if it's being done in one place, maybe it's being done in others. And from looking at this anomaly, that doesn't make sense at all. And really, we know it, what it is. It's just the it's the payoff for the, the support. It's, it's a bribe. It's a backhanded bribe. We know that. No one really wants to start calling all this stuff out in the right way they want to put. They'll attach some liberal agenda onto it instead of pointing out that this is a real problem. And that's why I ask you to do. If you're going to gauge stuff like this, why don't you bring up the real problem? Be the third uh, the third wheel to this whole this whole pro, this whole condition that we're living, and you have the you can start building the evidence from all this on how to do that. But this, if there's going to be this kind of an anomaly transparent to us, or even one that's not so transparent that we see that we're not going to comment on, what about the ones that are transparent to us? Are we even going to respond to those? And if we're not, then doesn't that win? Doesn't that secretness make its way? The covertness of that make its way into our lives and. And when we find out it's not for our good, good for a political party is not good for the good of the people. You know, here, this is not civilians, it's not the people of the United States, it's the civilians. It's a very particular, very particular class. When you see the word individual, what that is, in the context of a U.S. code law, it's not people at all either. This is what I tell you about, we're back to the, uh, the commercial aspect of this whole thing. And if you want to continue to gripe about the Fed and all that, continue to be quiet on all these things. This is what gives this stuff the, the air to breathe. So I didn't know. I usually don't like talking about this stuff because it's just uh, it's just kind of a noise to me. But but when you see this level of metal of freedom, folks, well, it doesn't even come close to giving some casino owner his wife a thing. And so you see the adulteration, you see the costume in this medal, and I think veterans understand this as well. Now, it's an honor to be recognized. It's a big deal to be recognized for what you've done. But really, was what it was, what was it when you look at the background? It was a bunch of set-up people, like, like I entered into talking about the silence of the war, that there were now World War I. It's all fabricated. It was all timed. It was all scheduled. Think about the scheduling of this, starting up and then shutting off like a valve, like a switch, like a faucet. Stupid human tricks. And we watch it, and we watch it, and we watch it, and we do nothing against it. That, that's not that's not the thing you're going to do when you get the principle you're going to learn behind the woodshed. There's things that you have to figure out about what it's sending, what messages it gives, how it empowers people that are harming us. We have to learn how to get in and stop that. As one of the memes went through about the picture of the propaganda that was pictures of a a spider with some German face on it or some Hungarian, I don't remember now what the face was, and it had some words on it talking to a condition, and you had to be careful about engaging with this and give, slipping and giving them advantage. I looked at that pain, and I said, that's what's happening in the, uh, so, uh, that's it's hap happening right now in alternative dispute resolution pro form, uh, formats within the government. It's a choice weapon for the government. That they get you in to discuss something, and you don't know you're handing them the advantage. And this pain from the German war, the World War, um, uh, propaganda from World War One, speaks to its function today. And I explained in that, which I get no response from these so-called critical thinkers in the world, uh, these enlightened ones. They don't respond. If that, I wish they would because they could empower themselves with all what they know. But see, they, I think they know that they would have to start doing once they start seeing what I'm saying. You just can't. It's not about knowing. I said knowledge doesn't stop. The, um, any amount of knowledge doesn't stop this condition this choice weapon that the government has chosen, this ADR consensus-driven uh, condition, the manufacturing of consent, knowledge of it or knowledge about it or knowledge 
Even how to stop it is not stopping it. It's the physical acts of taking to stop the things that we see the propaganda of World War II are empowered today. Okay, I mean, I don't know what to say. That They're telling us right in our face how they're continually beating us down and how we keep repeating the same nonsense to ourselves and not calling that stuff out. Oh, I see the memes. I got to see it. I never saw that propaganda. I've seen lots of propaganda posters. I didn't see that one. What am I supposed to know about all of them? But here was another one. Out of all the ones that streamed through my feed from one, one, uh, 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 one uh, account, that one spoke to me today. And I said, that's still going on today. If you thought World War I was the end of the war, all wars and all that, no. It was just a notice of how they're going to continue it. And the people that are writing the propaganda are the ones in the control today. The control of the propaganda writers then are uh, knew a secret and they work it today. Nothing has changed. Nothing. And so we can be crickets or maybe we can sit back and say, wow, we're really, we're really into a, you know, maybe above our heads. We better, we better figure something out really fast. And we're not going to do it by incessantly knowing something. As I just said, the process that that propaganda poster was speaking to is something you have to engage but avoid. Think about that trick. And I'm telling you, I've figured it out. It's not only for me to see it. All you got to do is start reading about it. And I've told you, the bottom line is, is you assert the reality against their fiction. You stop having the ring in your nose. You stop being led by the propaganda. You stop uh, giving it over to them to have a say. You, like I told you, and, the, and thank you again. To the, again, one that doesn't thrill, take much to thrill me. One comment uh, maker on this uh, cannabis: attack the process. You don't give it air to breathe. Perfect, perfect. And then you assert all the conundrums of the violations of law, and you do not give it a place to go. And I look and I say, that is where you can eliminate I, at least 80% of the things that we see, and I don't see much of anybody doing that. It's, and it's really that simple in a way. It doesn't mean it's immediate. It doesn't mean this thing's over. I've told you, we've been working for years. And most of the work is trying to get people to start thinking clear again. It's difficult, and I don't put any excuse on that. It's just the way we are. We want to believe there's an authority that's taking care of us, and it's not. It's all fabricated. And then there was another fabrication on that. Again, this manufacturing of the consent to that is, is really an interesting process. It's all identifiable, though. It's uh, tr transparent to most people except myself and a couple of other people I show it to. And you all who listen, whether you want to engage or not, you know about this. And yet we don't have enough people stepping up to at least become that example to call it out. At least that much. And yeah, I know it goes a little better. We start calling it out. All of a sudden, things the, na the nastiness stops. It just shuts them down. They don't really know what to do. And see, because no one even, before someone like myself showed up, and it wasn't even in this direction I'm talking about today. It was in a totally different area, but it leads you. The, this method kind of leads you along, and you find it out. There's only one place, the stinking abyss, it sits. You're going to be at the stinking abyss when you're done. Like I talked about uh, with the... Uh, William Roberts, you know, for a long time we were on the same network originally. This is when I started broadcasting. I happened to be get on his, his the network he was on. It was a revolution broadcasting, I think it was, now defunct. And I always appreciated his knowledge, his, his thing. I said, you're just learning this over here that I found in the law. And you're going to apply it. And we're going to be standing, and we found and I, how I likened it, was we were standing shoulder to shoulder with our independent study looking at the same stinking abyss. Now, the question is that you're standing at the shoulder to shoulder with anybody looking in the stinking abyss. Now, what are we going to do with it? And because you realize when you're standing there, there is something that has to be done with it. And it's not going to be as easy. It's a stinking abyss. You're not filling it in. Now what? Now we have to something to contain, and there's stuff coming out of it. Now what? And so, you take your little bit of it. You take your part. You take your angle, whatever you found, and you start applying it. Uh, two of us standing in the three of us standing on the rim looking into the stinking abyss. We say, there it is. It's real. It's working. It's happening. And it needs to be stopped. It doesn't happen. It doesn't, you don't stand there forever when you're watching it. That's the cricket to become a cricket just by looking into it. It, it gazes back at you and you start becoming uh, programmed by it as well. It's a pretty powerful problem. This is an internal thing to us. So let me move on now to where I was going to start. 
Uh, problem is that the Medal of Freedom is given to people that go support other non, uh, occupiers in other countries should tell you what's going on in this country. It's consistent with the with what I keep telling you can be found in the deeds of their people that the Libra Code tells us all about. If I knew nothing else, I can tell you that much. And I've been telling you that much. And here's another evidence. If you didn't connect that up, I'd do it again for you. And I was hoping that you'd, I'd hope folks that listen to me for a while can start running their, their mind around, oh yeah, that connects that, that connects that, that connects that. Do I say it's the absolute? No, absolutely. We can't know because we don't, we don't create this. We just see the reflection of the deeds. What it does is also a conjecture. But if we can start to know, if circumstantially tie it to other cause and effects that kind of ripple out, you better start taking notice of that because that ripple may come and become a tsunami down the road as it, as the energy pinches off into a small cove and then the energy becomes of an amplitude that is going to inundate you and, and take you out. Talking a little bit esoteric there. Sorry, that's the way it came out. Uh, let's move on, though. Something that I noticed, I wasn't, like I said, I'm not into the politics of this stuff, but it's there to give us examples. Uh, and I want uh, those of you that are into politics and those of you that want to know so much and, and want to say and that feel helpless against, uh, against it, I think I've come up with something you might want to consider, uh, just as a thought. I may not be able to fulfill what I've even started. Again, there's just so much to, to do, but I felt compelled to at least give a notice, and it may not seem like much uh, to most of you all. Uh, some of you it might. Uh, some will realize I'm, it's a, maybe a, a fool's errand, but that's really the point. I get, identifying objectively what, that, that, that it's a fool's errand to expect things like justice and law and accountability. That the people don't agree that it, that doesn't exist. They think that the system is, is uh, there to do, it's a, you know, I'm here from the government here to help you. But we don't have enough good examples, objective examples, that that's the fact. But I think I might have accidentally run, a, run a, a, a cross one. It's really kind of important in a way. Uh, because it's an attack on people at the instance of a government lawmaker, so-called, uh, or at least acknowledged so, that I think that we might have a way in for those of you that are political oriented and like to stick a, put sticks in the spokes, but do it. Uh, but this is not, not so much a, a scary thing to do, but you have to be pretty accurate about this one. Because certainly when you go after the system and the politics, they're going to want to look at you. And so I'm not going to say this is for everybody, but this is definitely for some people, and there's not really that much risk either when you stay inside of where the objective basis is, and you say, but that's my reason. My reason to tell you is this authority and law, and your requirement to listen to me is this requirement of law, and I get to come over here by this constitution, and so if you want to violate that, then you're the problem, not me. And what am I speaking about? Uh, something came up, and I, I kind of looked over it. Uh, again, it's just, to me, political nonsense, but it, it, becomes, it can become important when it finally reaches a fruition. Uh, Rep Representative Maxine Waters calls for political violence. I just want to touch this because I'm going to move on to something that eventually comes out of this. And this is the story you may have heard, may or may not have heard. Maxine Water advocates mob politics, examin uh, examining Gavin Newsom's particular brand of California progressivism, and a look at uh, Derek Hunter's new book is this uh, thing I just found. I just went back this uh, last night to go find it because I thought I'd seen it. I remember seeing a video where she's actually uh, inciting in a very particular way. You have to be very careful on this one. She incited a very particular thing, but now you've got to just do the one extra step to show, but, but people didn't limit it to her incitement of essentially riot, mob action, which breaches the peace. And now you've got this thing uh, more into the line of what the elements of law are in the breach of the criminal side. And then you also add to affect politics. You got to go find, I'm just giving you a thumbnail, you go find what the definition that the United States has made, because this is what they are under. The United States Code defines what politics is, and you'll see that it has to do with uh, adjusting the political will of the people. And when you look at who they just attacked, you might be able to construct uh, the uh, facts in order to show the elements of, a, of inciting riot to do terrorism coming from Maxine Waters when she was on the video you can collect as evidence. It was out talking about this, the that the, the she, uh, Ma the Congresswoman Maxine Waters, calling for attacks on the Trump administration at a rally in Los Angeles Saturday, quote, if you see anybody from the cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, or at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd, and you push back on them, and you tell them that they're, they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. Now, that's her statement. You'd have to parse that a little bit, but I think it can be used to 
now move into what's happened to somebody. Uh, someone now recognizes this, and right after that, and they're discussing this. Again, I'd look at these as pieces of evidence that can lead you down a trail. It, it didn't lead me. I was already had an idea, so I had to go backtrack and find some of these things that would fulfill it. And they were there. It's just a matter of, 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 of um, framing this in a proper way to satisfy what it is that you are, your objective is. And in, in, a, in an effective way, not in just a, um, an ineffective, you don't want to waste your time on this either if you're going to go into this. But you can put it together and it means something, whether or not, and this is how I preface it, whether or not those that profess to be lawmakers and under the Constitution will recognize it, you can establish a neat little record, stick in your, your stick in the spokes of this, of this fraud. Or it has to respond. And uh, you get to be, you're the one in the driver's seat about that, that someone after that, uh, that call uh, was characterized this as, a, as an, uh, Max, that Maxine Waters was calling an all-out war as liberal Democrats begin aggressive campaign of harassing Trump supporters. Now, you see, the interpretation of that is now into Trump supporters. You go find the evidence that it exactly has expanded from her call to do what limited things she said. And so then you show that the the public, by this article here, is alarmed that it was a declaration of war. Now, what are you doing? You're kind of doing a defamation case in a way. You have to show how the people were responding to this incitement, notwithstanding what she limited it to, but that now it had a ripple effect that's now con uh, caused this, this conflagration, the political conflagration. Now, people are actually worried. People are actually having to respond to this in ways that they didn't have to prior to her statements. All right, so I'm, I think I'm, I hope I'm pointing out you take the news and we have to wait, and all of a sudden it festered, the wound festered, it boiled, and, 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 and then it, it got a big boil and then it broke. And it broke in such a way that you can connect, at least plausibly so, the re reasonable belief. From her insight, Maxine Waters' incitement of riot to do political, to attack the politics, was essentially the terrorism that's defined in the code. And, and it came out here, the, the boil breaks here, uh, the mob showed up outside Tucker Carlson's house and ordered him to leave town. Now you see the direct connection of what she was saying to do. But they went to the, where he lives, folks. They use her characterization. To, to work, go up to his door and do some damage to his place. No, I don't know Tucker Carlson. Yeah, I've seen some videos. I actually didn't understand that he was actually, I guess, a, a, the progenitor of the uh, Daily Caller uh, as a website. So I don't know a whole lot here. What I do know is that he's a he's someone who's in the news. He's someone that discusses, uh, gives ideas on the on, on media, and he uh, has an opinion. He has his place. Whatever he does. He informs, whether you agree or not, he's got an information prop, uh, position uh, that uh, is political, that when you can tie this, leave town to going to his house, breaching the peace of his home, to Maxine Waters' deck, uh, call for this, and you can plausibly show a connection to affecting your ability to have a broad spectrum of political insight to get begotten, to in uh, again plausibly affecting your political views, you have a direct, um, well, an indirect connection to the one who called for the war against your politics. I think, no, well, I guess it's open for other opinion, but I think I'm delineating a little bit how how you how you connect it up. Again, each piece of element, each element constitutes a belief pattern that you believe, and then it has an effect in the world. They went and attacked somebody by this insight. Uh, the insider riot. No, of course the, the in D.C. no less. Now you gotta understand. He, I guess I didn't know this, but he lives in D.C. That, that's a district, not a state. Start pulling this all together. How this starts to work. But they're going in. No one like no no other lynch mob. And said, get out of town. Well, the, well, except for the lynch mob did a lynching. So what they did is they they tore up on his property a bit. They scared the people inside. The wife. You get the, you go on the internet, you see where she was afraid, feared for her life. There, there, folks, who affected someone in the house. Breaching the peace is the primary, uh, primary objective law to keep the peace from being breached, or to allow for an objective accountability to those that breach it. That we can tie directly back to Maxine Waters' statement, and then I bring it, I bring it broad spectrum, saying, 
that uh, nobody in that Democratic Party, because you see by what we see in the Constitution, the president supports the party. The, the other side that's not the winner is still supporting its own party. You're looking at this political division that was sewn into the fabric of this country. The division that would be sewn in and almost impossible to remove at that level. That I look at it and I say, okay, I think I'm going to use that uh, to uh, expose that and to get it to stop uh, some to some extent. Get them to blink anyway. Uh, that uh, some they take advice, they move to uh, Tucker Carlson's house, they breach the peace in his home, they scare his family, they did some things. You'll find all the stories. I didn't get that deep into it, just to read the... I was looking for my elements, if I was going to make a paper, how it would do it, or how I might have to here because of what I've just done before, what I did a couple days ago. Uh, then we hear, okay, now we're looking at a broad spectrum. Did the Democratic Party uh, not um, like... I mean, did it, did it condemn this in a substantial way? Well, sure enough, they almost had to. So here we find the news as well, as I went through. Uh, Schumer, Pelosi, and I guess listen to how I'm uh, analyzing this to do the elements of the things that I'm addressing, uh, defenses that someone might bring up against the charge of uh, terrorism, and or now we have RICO, which is a, it's now I build it up a little bit better, we have prerequisite. We have requisite uh, actions that have to be taken. Uh, we have to fulfill those as well. You get all, folks, you get all this by going to read the, the, the code. It tells you what they are. And you have to fill, and I read some cases about it, but this is a, a planned uh, condition, it seems, that the organization, democratic organization, such that you might uh, characterize it, is really moving in an organized racketeering fashion to do what? To do terrorism, ultimately. And then you hold the, the the lesser account that they're they're breaching the peace if nothing else, and they don't substantially check themselves. And we get that they tried to, or the, at least openly made a record that they wouldn't agree. We did find that, so we have to deal with that. Schumer, Pelosi, admonish Waters, call to harass uh, cabinet officials. Well, it's gone beyond that on top of it, but uh, so now we see it wasn't strong enough. Apparently, I would use it that way. The top two top Democrats at Capitol Hill criticized their colleague, Rep uh, Representative Maxine Waters. Duh, Democrat Cal duh, California, Democrat to California, the duh of California, for calling on, on Americans to confront members of the Trump administration uh, at, and absolutely harass them. Well, I'm asking here in this condition, it's time for you to turn around and confront this call in, to war against people in a political sense, uh, the, the, the purveyors and conduits of information whether or not you you don't have to do this because you believe in it, you can do it just because it exists this way, and you make yourself part of that class, and you say you were affected this way. And these people said they they condemned it, but did they take any action that brought accountability that would not allow this to get to blow up like it has? Well, the fact that it went to someone's home proves that they didn't. So what we can identify is this was just lip service to try and cover the fact that they, in fact, do agree with it. And I'm sure if you wanted to go down that trail, there's plenty of statements you'll find these people doing, couched underneath nice and warm and fuzzy words, that they intend to do this. And now we build up, not only do we build up the terrorism condition and the sedition that it might be, uh, the, uh, the uh, inciting riot breaching the peace into RICO as an organization doing it, so we use the constitutional party system. No, they're organizations. Free your mind on how this works, folks, and you start to find more uh, object, more uh, more uh, more um, places to 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 do something. Be, become effective in these areas. You know, we're not helpless, and I think the lack of us calling it out are, is one of our problems. That's why I'm even talking about it. So we can, I can piece together the a, a probable cause belief. I have a pretty serious thing going on, and no one's stopping it now. Why do I say that? Well, did we see the DOJ step in and say, well, yeah, that was deciding right, or an answer is how it wasn't from an, a non-aligned uh, party, which is you can't find them in the FBI, or the apparently we have evidence we can't find that a non-aligned, non-conflicted interest in the FBI or the DOJ, can we? You bring that for two little pieces of email, uh, two, um, excuse me, uh, websites information that are true, would give you that evidence. And two sheets of paper, you don't have to do the whole thing. Just do the part that was highlight the pertinent. And you build the case that there's nowhere to take this to. But it doesn't mean that you give up. Now you get to, you start finding out that you get to press this even harder. So then there comes a call. It's time to we, uh, we the people, and I'm not going to discuss and needle down on what we the people means. It's just, let's just accept it like the generic commoner thinks. It's time for we the people resist Maxine Waters' violent rhetoric. 
You see, now it's risen to someone's calling for action. And that's what I ask you to do, but not on a website. Actually, put it together. I'm trying to show you the nuts and bolts on the basic nutshell and how to put something together here. Even as innocuous and distant as this thing uh, that, that Maxine Waters started to do. It just becomes even more important. I didn't realize this in, at the election, the midterms. Uh, but uh, it, apparently these two, Pelosi and Maxine Waters, become very important now. And you get to torpedo into that. You get to nail that right right now already. You get to set the record right now. Like I I have started. Whether or not I can continue, I don't know. We'll see. It's time to resist, folks. Okay, that's, the time is now. Folks. It has been time. And I'm trying to show you that within the innocuous little actions and the rhetoric and the political this and that and the things like the ho-hum stuff, you can build up a case. And I don't mean it's a, just an opinion. You build it up by the evidence. You build it up by the elements of the law seeking accountability. And this thing did startle me a bit, that we would have people going to someone's house and harassing their family. Like I said, I don't know Tucker Carlson. I don't know what he thinks or doesn't. I don't know his... I don't know anything about it. I just know I see a couple of things. He seems to come through the videos periodically. I guess he's well known. I guess he's well followed. I don't know. I really don't know. It, it doesn't. None of the most of the, most most of that information doesn't help me. But this one did, where he gets attacked, and then I can make a direct connection. Um, well, even a, I'm going to say a, a circum. I think it's direct, but you might think it's circumstantial. I make that circumstantial, but probable cause based belief that I can connect it to someone who started his attack. I don't know about his politics. I don't know about Tucker Carlson's opinions or any of that. I just know that he got attacked, and he's in a place that I can show is a prominent place for information on the politics side. Why? Because I'm looking at a terrorism charge as well. Why? Because that's what the terror, that's what the statute says is, is something that's not supposed to happen. As an aside, I happen to know that the midterm vote, vote, vote just put these two women in, 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 the, in seats of power and decision. What a wow, folks! Well, isn't that it? Well, look at the power we can start to have if it gets if it gains some steam, and then you're on the correct side of politics, if you will. Given you can get somebody in, uh, induced into believing uh, that your cause is worthy of making a point, unless they're all in on it, which I believe, and so we have provision for that eventually. I'm just laying out a laying out a thing and something in the news I saw. Someone being attacked, because we heard my, uh, my idea. I don't like people getting attacked in their homes, folks, especially for this politics stuff. That can happen to you. That can happen anywhere. No, well, what happened to you if you're a cricket? Oh, well, I'm safe now, aren't you? As your world around you burns like California is. So I wrote, based on that, I was really, like I said, a little bit shocked to watch these people go to how they don't have the sense, folks. This is the other problem. You're dealing with animals. You're dealing with those humans. They don't have the sense to, to not go do this. And this is the reality. Those of you that will deny it, you want to watch anarchy in action, mob rule, that's what this is. This is the people inside the government that don't like what's going on, that's going to fight against that part they don't like. That's the real definition of anarchy. It's not this new age nonsense that we've been hearing. It could be, but it's not reality. And I don't use that. Ex I won't use that excuse in order to cause an invasion of what I think we need to be doing. At least call it out and at least become an example of how we go about making notice, whether or not all by ourselves we have enough power to do anything. Part of our mission is to figure out how to how to show people what it is and get them interested. What if the whole point about this is that we just we just we just address the oppressor everywhere it, it pops up, or he or she pops up? What if that's all this is about? And if we don't, we we condemned ourselves. So I wrote. I saw this. I wrote this thing on Twitter, and I I had this idea, and I haven't gone back to prove it again. I don't have so much time, but I remember a couple of court cases I think I've reported on that said that Twitter can be used. All these social networks can be used to give notice for purposes of process of, of a pending suit. And so, without further uh, study, I went ahead and made a notice on Twitter relative to what I understand the thing is supposed to do when I go ahead and do this. And to show you, again, remember, Twitter is only, a, what, 288 characters now? I believe I've done an adequate 288 character complaint to the proper parties at this point about this condition. First, I gave a notice in fact, it actually took two, two, two notices because Gary L. explained that uh, these people are the untouchables. And I said, okay, let's find out. I'm going to have to do another Twitter to put, them on, put the right proper people on notice of the 
accountability that they have the obligation and duty. I have to impose them the duty, find the duty they're imposed with so I can get them for, for dereliction, malfeasance, and then get them for omission. That's another felony. But I got to get the right people. So I did some quick research, found out who the, how this is, I thought they were supposed to work. They can come and tell me it was wrong, and I asked them to do that. All in two Twitters at 288 characters. This is why my first one went out and said, based on this Maxine Waters Pelosi non-condemnation this agreement that I see going on, no accountability to all of it. People now being attacked and the peace, and the peace being breached. It's as simple as this is, folks. You witness the breach of the peace, and there's no accountability. There's no sheriff in town. I think you become part of the sheriff, the sheriff's deputies. Okay, wherever you are, and I'm across the country from this. You need to explain Nancy Pelosi and explain how you and California cohort. Representative Maxine Waters are not a menace to the people but for inciting mobs to breach the peace at the home such as Tucker Carlson. And I leave a link to the Twitter that uh, Barman produced from Real Liberty Media of the story itself that I got to see that Tucker's house, Tucker Carlson's house was attacked. And the mob that was standing in front of it. And that link it sits there. And I said, to advance political aspirations, and I asked the question then, is this senility, sinister, or both? And in the uh, reference is uh, is the prior link that RLM, the barman, uh, posted uh, on his, on the feed, as automatic as that ends up being. Uh, it, it has two, two statements by Pelosi, and I believe they were Pelosi. Yeah. And that includes that's included in what I put out there to Nancy Pelosi and Maxine Waters and to Tucker Collarson. We have a problem here. Explain, Nancy Pelosi. Explain, Maxine Waters. Tucker Carlson, none of these people have answered. He didn't answer to object that I made the question. I don't know if people understand the, the power that's going on here relative to legal process. Yes, I said legal. The stuff that they agree to. And so I put that out. I'm asking senility, sinister, or both. Explain this condition that you've incited mobs to go attack someone. I, I suppose you could look at this and say I'm politically wired. I'm speaking to, con to protect Tucker Carlson and the Republican Party or his conservative views or whatever. That's clearly, I'll just tell you out, right out now, it doesn't even become part of the issue, and it's not. I'm talking neutral terms of inciting mob violence against someone and breaching the peace. That's it, what we're talking about. It happened to identify some people who've done it. And someone who was the victim, whether he wants to know this, he was uh, he he understands it. But if he wants to respond or not, I, I really don't I really don't care. Maybe he's feeling he can't. Maybe he needs some help. I don't know. These are the thoughts going through my mind. We now we start, so we start from something that Maxine Water did months and months and months ago. Festers and in, in, in the boil pops here just a couple of days ago. It affected me enough. I said I'm going to put tie together some legal things I've understood. I'm going to give a notice to these people in Twitter. Fascinating, folks. It's fascinating what you can do today. What if I'm wrong anyway? Who cares, right? Who cares? But what if I'm not wrong? I hope you appreciate the magnitude of what's going on. So Gary L. sent me a response on this. And thank you, those of you who sent me the responses on Twitter. There's not very many of you that do. My Twitter's kind of locked down. I can't do much anyway. So I appreciate any kind of responses that, uh, that I would get. Not that I need to be there, but it's just nice to know that the information is getting out and being responded. And we get, to my mind, we, I can work out things sometimes uh, through that avenue as well. Like I was kind of doing here, because Gary L. sends me a response. He goes, sadly, it seems so. <laughs> senility, <laughs> senility or a sinister or both. Uh, yeah, it, sadly. And then he has a picture of uh, the untouchables. And if I remember the untouchables a uh, bit, uh, I think there was the, uh, what uh, was it, Elliot Ness or somebody? Anyway, the, the, maybe the FBI guy says he goes beyond law to moral uh, moral implications, and it may have been not have been legal what they were doing, but it was morally required that they do it. And I looked at that. And I said, "There's your line right there. That's the key to this whole thing." Now we're outside of law, and it's a law man, right? I mean, this is a pretty cool. You start to pull these together, and you don't. Again, I'm not going to describe the whole thing. I'm not. I'm just going to go off the off of a an inkling of a hunch, but I'm going to tie it to a legal foundation. And so I take I take what Gary L. presents as a, the untouchables and, and what that all might mean and what interpret it without discussion more. I say no law, 
let's find out. And I say that understanding we're now dealing in the realm of morality, not legality, as well. And this is a starts to bring up an interesting thing for me. However, no, neither here nor there, it's now a process, folks. I've already laid the question out. I'm asking for a response. Show me how I don't have the, uh, the you in a position where you've incited mob rule. Uh, and Pelosi, you've agreed with it. You didn't do anything substantive to stop it. It's now blown up into a, a harm against a man and his family in, in the District of Columbia. I think I've laid the elements of the problem, uh, inciting riot, and I haven't, and I've incited, and I've said uh, breaching the peace, and I haven't yet me mentioned the terrorism because I may not have to. It'll be all be in a complaint eventually if I go that far with it. And so Gary brings up the question: These people are untouchable. They're senil senility, and they're maybe sinister. And so I respond: No law. Let's find out. And I continue my notice through Twitter of what I understand to be lawful legal notice for the purposes of a lawsuit. And then I go on to say this, and without responsive answer, Nancy Pelosi and Maxine Waters, I've probable cause to believe, quote, of the actual commission of felony, close quote, or mental incapacity, semicolon, petitioning, comma, United States Constitution, First Amendment, and 18 U.S.C. 4 and 3, at Speaker Ryan and POTUS. I expect exception notices avoiding culpability, period. Okay, what did I just say? Well, I gave the right of the First Amendment was the right of petition government, and then I gave two statutes in the penal section, the code of four and three for misprison of felony and being an accessory after the fact of that, and handed it to what those statutes say to the people that have a duty to do something, either Speaker Ryan firstly and possibly the POTUS. I've handed it to the Republican Party as well, as I noticed after I did that, that they can now use to go after the Democratic Party if there's a distinction between the two systems. Isn't this a neat test, folks? Well, maybe none of you think so, but I... I think it's kind of interesting. I get to exercise the law, the accountability, the structure, the establishment, and knowing full well we're into a whole different system. And I want to watch this. I want to see the look on their face, if I'm nothing else here, folks. Because I had literally I tell you right now, on air, I have probable cause to believe at least felony has been going on. And they now have to supposedly in the notice and the legal if this was all going to be up in the law and we were supposed to work work this out and we were all counter checks to each other in this uh, representative republic that we were supposed to be having if we could keep it. I'm keeping it, folks. I'm a check on this. You can too. You can take my lead and move this as well if you for, if you felt that this was a, 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 a serious consequential thing, and I think it is. Otherwise, I don't think I would have put any time into looking at it. Well, again, it's just, it's just political noise, most part. But until someone got attacked in the streets, folks, by the mere suggestion, this is the this is the the nonsense that we're dealing with. The the stupidity. It comes to real, it comes to a real action on the ground. Why did I say I ex expect exception notices? Well, if you go to the law, there's a there's a an exception that can be provided by the Act of Congress. So I told them I, they can, I'm waiting for their exception notices. Why? Well, if they don't have an exception notices, I can presume them to be culpable. And I use culpable in particularly here. That is the moral ab object as well. There's a moral and legal, lawful object in that. Well, the legal and the lawful is the moral. Just what Gary L. was saying, they're untouchable. And what the comment was in the, in Elliot Ness, in the, I think his idea was, uh, it went, it went to something moral. It's not maybe legal, but I had to do it. Because it was the moral thing to do. That's what culpable is. Now, if you've listened this far, I hope you appreciate how, again, kind of went through a little bit long on this, but you can develop these appear seemingly innocuous conditions as political infighting. To me, if I look at the totality, even stuff I haven't talked to you about, hopefully you are understanding this, the comprehensive approach that this becomes in just 500 or so, 600 characters. I, I think it's pretty, to me, it became pretty interesting. Now, I'm going I'm to try and do some follow-up on this. I'm giving them a few days to respond. I'm going to send. I have to do a follow-up to tell them uh, I required your answer. This was not a joke. Don't think that this is not a service to process of a notice required underneath these acts. I'm going to probably have to send that notice back to all these people and say that this is a, a real thing. 
Now, further, I'd have to follow that up with a probably a, a demand uh, written in, in mail, and that would probably be more proper and give them more time, make it more official. And I could do this pretty quickly, but at that point, I'm starting to get into having a whole new project that I don't know that I'm going to be able to fulfill. So I'll just let you know up front. I'm going to look to see if I can set this up pretty clearly and try and get an answer before I have to get too deep into it. But in the meantime, I'm showing, I'll be showing whatever, whatever I, you know, I have a, uh, I have an idea of what's happening and what's not going to happen, which is going to be probably everything. But I'm going to be able to show that here before I need to go too far. Because if they won't talk to you at all, then we're back to the problem of the most prob the biggest problem in this country, where we're given, we're given awards for medals of freedom to people that oppress others in other places under a color of doing benefits for just those people. Just the Jewish community, nobody else. That's not that's not that's not my focus. That's just one of the of the uh, in this classless society we're supposed to be living. The class of people that have exalted freedoms. See, they have the freedom to be cared, not you. So, uh, as frivolous as it might sound, I I am not taking this frivolous. I put a two part notice in the Twitter as I understand is notice lawful notice of something happening. I will do a follow up in the Twitter. Uh, to qualify, the, to let them remind them that I'm still waiting. They probably don't care. They're probably missing it. They probably don't even read their their their, their Twitter. But see, that's the problem when uh, for them when the uh, government uh, the court the government court said, well, they can be re you can receive lawful notice for things like this. And given I may be able to make it nice and efficient for myself, there might be a letter going out uh, to qualify the problem. Say so here it is. Now, what does that get to do? That hands the Republicans the ability to go after Maxine Waters and Pelosi when they become uh, in the power seats uh, here after the first of the year. Or they don't, folks. See, this is the whole point. If they don't, then you know they're working together, right? As I've been saying, it's just the, the different wings of the same bird of prey, and you're the one they're after. And that should really bother you. And so, uh, for those of you that want to, you can become a, become involved on some pretty stupid sounding stuff in a way. I mean, Twitter, writing some, what does those words mean? Who cares? Of all the other things I see going through the internet, do you think that would be kind of neat to see a thousand people put this in, actually put this in effect, actually go after these people and get an answer? I said a thousand. I only got a couple hundred that, that follow me and I only got a handful, literally a handful that respond. So it's not looking so good from my account. Oh, we can sure do the memes about taxes, theft, and and uh, vote harder. We can do all those memes and the NPC. We can do all those memes and do nothing with the crickets for all the folks that are awoke. Yeah, right. Oh, those critical thinkers, the knowledgeable ones, the enlightened ones of our day, the philosophers of our day. Right. What a joke. What a so a hubris and ego-driven condition. And we have a man out in, the out in the world and his family got beat down but after someone uh, made a statement to have some, uh, some others do it and they did it. And so, uh, maybe it didn't mean much to you. Maybe I wasted my breath here for most of you. I hope not. The, the getting at these guys, at least making records of this and getting yourself set up and making the record to give you the next step, the, making the foundations to make your next step to become effectual is not that hard. I hope you heard that here in my last explanation. I'm not here just to tell you, oh, look what I've done. I'm here to hopefully become an example of how things get done. And until we learn better than that, all I have to do is follow that because I don't know better. And I, when I follow that method, I just explained to you, even a ta so I, it doesn't matter. To, none of this is really relevant to me except for a man got his family uh, threatened. That bothers me. That is affecting to me. But other than that, the whole politics, I have no no, no, men, no idea about it. It's just too much noise. And yet within that, I can show you something I'm totally not into. I can look into that condition. Finally, it came to the conditions. I'm sure you can look around and find others. But this one caused me to think about a sequence of steps that I can set a foundation to become politically relevant for those of you that are politically minded. I can become lawfully relevant. For those of you that are lawfully minded, that want to understand that you have a part to play in maintaining law and order when law doesn't. Remember, these are lawmakers. 
Oh, they'll come at you and say they're immune, but they're not. They're only immune within the context of their law enforcement, of their law making. And when they're not, when they're out in the street inciting riot, they're not protected there. You don't, you have to make that little statement in your little complaint. But you don't come as an, uh, you don't attack them as a blithering idiot. You come with all the, with all the elements, with all the facts. You, quick citations, short, short sentences, folks. It's not that hard. I, I hope, you know, if I've failed on one of my points here, was it Mark on the Beast at ProtonMail.com? Send me what I failed to do in two Twitters, giving them notice that we have a problem here and you were duty bound in order to fall to do this. Not only were you duty bound as the people I'm asking to explain, now I've got the, who is it, Ryan and the, and the POTUS having to look in and saying, wow, we might have something to do here. Or explain why not. See, I get an answer back. I'm supposed to get an answer back. He can respond to POTUS or Speaker Ryan can respond to me in Twitter. And if it's adequate, that's fine. Now, do you think I expect anything? Well, I don't expect much from anybody anymore on, on the social network. But isn't that interesting? Isn't that their Achilles heel and blind spot where a court has said that's sufficient to set a foundation for process and notice? Now, if you think I'm saying something frivolous, I need to know that because my my mind says it's not frivolous. But if you think I see some angle that I'm being dumb, I better you need to tell me because because I might actually trick pull this trigger here. But I don't know. I don't go so fast that it causes me too much trouble. Except we also know that when you do something that's even as asking people to explain, show cause how they're not committing felony, you'll have the FBI on your doorstep anyway, and they'll be threatening you. Which, I, as I said early on. That's how you know they're all part of it. No, he's, oh, yeah, we all know it's all part of it. No, it's not about just seeing that. That's an excuse. you got to prove it, and you got to show it to others that don't believe that. Don't be the opinions of the past. Be the evidence of the, of the current and future. Evidence. Because part of this that I see is everyone that seems to know, think they know something, then they go down with how much they think they know, and they never address the problems, and they all just complain about it, and that's not that's our problem. See, I look at I look down the road of this, and I see lots of people that are good people. I'm not, again, I'm not saying any of you are bad people. I'm saying that you can be great people and not do the thing you need to do. And I think you're all great people, and you're just not doing the thing you need to do. Okay, so I took all that. Something I'm not interested in, I find a real problem with a, a family being attacked. I don't care who the guy is, but I can then build the case around it to somebody make a thing out of it, and it's not just a hyperbola. Like, I, you, need to, you need to understand that's the point as well. I'm not making stuff up. I'm just looking and framing it in, within the context of an objective basis that can't be refuted by anybody. And I've given opportunity like you ought to uh, for anybody to have an, an answer to you. Now, I don't know why Tucker Carlson said thank you for the idea or whatever, or no thank you, I don't need your support or whatever. I don't know why he's not responding. But because of his silence, I, I'm going to take it that he's uh, feeling for his, fearing for his life, too. He doesn't want to respond. Now they've shut down the whole, they've shut down the whole, whole communication process, haven't they, with this insightful riot. It's what happens. It's what happens. How they shut people down. They intimidate you. I mean, I think about these uh, people, you, you, you folks at work. I mean, you're you're one of the main slave problems to yourself. You're not going to say anything much against your your condition, and that's not a judgment. That's just what happens, and that's where the system has put everyone. And somehow, you think I'm completely free behind the woodshed? No, that's why I'm behind the woodshed. There's things I will not. I've self-censored things that I will not do, in order to not go to a place that invokes. The, the ill will that I need to avoid or I don't need in my face anyway. And I have to focus what I do into what I can, conduits of, of, a, of, a, of efficacy that work. Not get the powers that be or even shouldn't be or whatever euphemism you want to call on your back. You don't need that. You do need to defend yourself. And that usually takes, like I said, it takes these writings. It takes thinking about how this thing works out. It takes thinking about, this is the stuff that's underneath the skin of this country and have been allowed to be underneath the skin. And, it, it, and it, it's, it's certainly going to continue even at the same pace or it's going to get worse. And I see it getting worse a bit. So I don't know if it, not doing anything is even the smart thing, even if it was, you know, first of all, if we're just keeping keeping pace, you're going to live with your so-called good old boy system forever. Is that what you want? 
A lot of people would say, yeah, just so they don't have to do nothing. That's an excuse, and then you got the ring in your back of your nose. I don't know what to say about that. But uh, it's going to get worse here. So I look for things, the Achilles heel problem. I get to exercise what we find doesn't work because no one wants to try and exercise it. And I suppose once we start exercising it, and the, like I said, more and more of you step up to start doing this. And then hopefully you get together, you keep a distance from yourself, but get together to formulate your attack, your, your attack plan. You, you find the, you find all the attack surfaces and you each hit a different surface. We start to become more effective on sticking a stick, put a stick right in their political spokes that they're using to hurt you all. Am I caring about the Republican Party or the Democratic Party? No, but there's a constitution that was supposed to do something that these people were supposed to follow that none of them are. And so it's apparently up to me to, and hopefully you all, because we all are in this together, it's up to each one of us to lay the foundation to make it so it's it's so uh, impervious to refu refutation that you can expose the very fact of their thing. And, and like I've said before, the best we may have is the embarrassment factor. And I'm willing to attack someone that rightfully needs it to be attacked when they're violating people or calling for the violation of people, that I'll, may, I'll, uh, I'll step in forward and I will set that foundation because ultimately I can't really be attacked. I can just expose other people that are in concert with those people. And what have I just done? I'm in the conspiracy, and if it's a criminal conspiracy, I got them. They can be in a conspiracy. If it's, not, if it's, if it's legal, that's fine. If lawful, that's fine. But if it's illegal, unlawful, I got them. Do I got them? If no one's looking, if I'm the only forest in the tree in the forest and I fall over, does it matter? Well, maybe likely not. At least not for anybody outside the forest. And so we all have to be, we're all, but we don't realize we're all part of the forest and we're gone deaf and crickets. And, and so, uh, getting back to what I wanted to go on to, uh, to take something totally innocuous uh, to what the you know, political infighting nonsense. Uh, we're revulsed by the declaration of mob violence and yet none of us stepped forward, and now it came to a, a head, and now I'm saying here is, when it came to a head, now I'm a witness to it. I get to actually make a record, and then go to the places that I'm told supposed to be the ones that are supposed to have a say, and expose whether or not they're going to say it. And then I actually did it in a political fashion that why not? I mean, they could, they've been going after eating away, trying to eat away. The Democrats have been trying to eat away the Republicans. Now that the Democrats are coming in to be in power of the House, now the Republicans can start eating away at the, uh, at the Democrats. Why? Because as long as they're eating away at each other, they're not making more laws to hurt you. How's that one? Then you could actually fuel that. <laughs> Get them in fighting to each other. And so, anyway, I don't know what you all think about this stuff. I come up with this ideas. I wish I had more of me to do this stuff. I really, not that I like it, but we're in such a battle. You know, they want to talk about the end of World War One. We That was like the start of how they were taking us down. I said, uh, there's a meme of propaganda that works today in a different fa fashion. Today, uh, how they take us down. So it's still continuing. There's nothing. We haven't learned anything from the history. I said, let's break the revolution or, of the wheel. Let's break it. Let's let's start finding. Let's set the the course for where we were supposed to be, even if it was a myth. As long as it was better than where we've led it, they've led us. UN using federal public private partnerships as a backdoor for global policies. Where have you heard about that, folks? Now I'm, I don't want to be too critical of the of this author or the website or the information. Absolutely on point. The information. I guess I'm back to. So what? Uh, how long have you been here? I've been telling you about this uh, stuff for years. We finally have another author that now sees it. Someone who says, and if I understand the dialogue in the in the in the article, uh, this is a free range report dot com uh, that they've been studying this uh, UN, you know, Agenda Twenty One, uh, the Sustainable Development, the NGOs. You know, same thing I've talked to you about is the is the condition. But you know, I also speak to a method, and for as much as I appreciate, and I do not condemn. This article for talking about how uh, Secretary of State Zinke is going to be the conduit through which uh, advisory committees advise him to make recreational withdrawals from the public lands, uh, that that's something you need to be concerned with as they will uh, privatize these things. It's not just what she's saying here and the author saying. It becomes non-use, not tourism use. It becomes non-use. It becomes a conservative conservation as the new term is, the old conservation term was a production, improving production from the watershed. 
The new one is the non-use. That's a war crime. Uh, she's explaining that Zinke, who's in office, and Trump put her there, is using public private private partnerships to bring recreational industry in to take land to st- seal it off from your use. To that extent, that's great. But this is where I get, I have a problem with people. You know all this stuff you know, and you haven't taken it over to say how it's being implemented. You mention the art, uh, the, the uh, advisory committee, but you don't look at the law to see why it's an advisory committee and what that means. But this is an internal function because the advisory committee is internal to the authority of the Secretary of Interior to do so. I've talked to you all about this stuff when I was talking about um, MMAC, Mineral Mining uh, uh, um, Mining uh, Advisory Committees. Advisory committees are not external to the system. They're internal to it. And so you not recognize it as someone who reads and understands this stuff, and all of you all, who read and understand is that there's a method why they had to go through the advisory committee and what that means and where that means the power is to stop it. And so my main criticism of this article is brilliant it is identifies this stuff. I don't want to undermine that at all. Is it never points to what you need to do, which I'll try to do a bit here now. Short, it's a real, a real quick answer. Relative to the uh, work of the of the Secretary of Interior, knowing that they're going and using these advisory committees to make land policies, your county and your county commissioners are the ones you address this problem to, to step in and assert coordination to shut down the land policy uh, that will do that. You, all of you, who have a right to go get minerals or travel the roads and trails in those areas and those public lands, the undisposed lands, and the right to water, and the right to ditches to get the water, you stand up and you go confront this, and you come there with that power to the county, and you pull that in and you say, you may be able to do If you do this, you may, you cannot go to infringe on these granted things under what act, folks? This dumb little mining law I keep telling you about. The Act of 1866. You cannot interfere with the prior disposed lands. Well, guess what? That might include those minerals that the government can't get and the counties can't get and the corporations can't get. And so, my criticism of this brilliant discussion explains to you how the internals of the Secretary of Interior are working. Uh, These public-private partners, these NGOs, these people that run the agenda for the United Nations that come and apparently look like they're taking it over, that throw things into conservation, which is non-use, which is a war crime against your country, are done by processes that are transparent to most everybody, but they're addressable, and they're addressable by you that can declare a right underneath some of these acts of Congress as being the beneficiary to it, and they're a trust breach, and the county, which is the 10th Amendment of the Constitution, says... You, that county has the power of things of county concern to enter into coordination and on all land use plans and have an input, not as a collaborator, not as a uh, a cooperative agency, not as an advisory council, which is subject to the administration of the administrator at the federal government, as a sovereign uh, authority outside of that that has to, that the, the federal has to recognize and seek the plans of the local county. That's you, folks. We're talking about a representative government. They didn't say it was easy to keep it. They said you had to keep it. And I'm pointing out that all these stories that are brilliantly written to expose the problem that no one will read anyway. I say no, that no one advisedly always. But no one will read that anyway. We'll understand how to impose uh, the, uh, assert, not impose, because you can't impose on this capacity. You assert the law that Congress has already written to protect you from these things. And why don't no one understands that, it just really kind of gets to irk in me, because it's so darn simple. Where was these? What is that code? 43 U.S.C. 1700. And then you go, that's the public, uh, the, the F, uh, FLIPMA, the Federal Land Mon- Public Management Act, Federal Public Lands Management, it doesn't matter. FLIPMA. Uh, 17, 43 U.S.C. 1700. You go to 1712, I think it is. I think it's 12. Go look for coordination. That's and look how it's supposed to orient itself. It's, there's recognition by the federal government as a as a federal proprietor of the land, not the sovereign, as a proprietor, like any other gardener managing a land, uh, to recognize local plans of of all governmental agencies. This is where government, uh, where the Jefferson Mining District stepped right in, and that's what we assert all the time. 
And I'm suggesting to you, wherever we've had um, a, a, an assertion and a comment written relative to coordination, and they've failed, there's no plan that's gone through. In fact, it gave us an in, and I've told you about the sage grouse and, and it's, uh, uh, the sage grouse problem. We shut that whole thing down. Oh, it doesn't mean they stop, but there's only a few of us that are doing this. You want to keep your roads and your water and your uh, access to the lands open, you're going to have to go through two powers. One is your right as a beneficiary, potential grantee, or a grantee under Acts of Congress, which I've explained to you. The Act of 1866 is the first one because it has all of them. And then it got expanded, actually, in 1872. Everyone wants to just not, not want to go, oh, it's too hard to read. Well, no, it was written by miners. Dumb miners wrote the mining law, folks. It was adopted by a miner who then was a congressman. So don't tell me this is too hard to understand. This is how far you are from your knowledge of your law of the land. I'm talking the real law of the land, the land. And thank you, free and slave. Thank you to see you there. I haven't seen you for a long time. I look up quite solid. This is not a spectator sport. The Republic, if you could keep it, meant it was not a spectator sport. Thank you for that reminder. I looked, just happened to look over. Realize I'm starting to lose my time here, folks. I don't know how far, much farther I had to go. I tend to have uh, my mind uh, starts to lose into what we need to do, not not really the reality of the time ticks. And so, got time, got plenty of time here. Good. I'm not going to get down my tabs, but that's okay. So there's, um, like I said, I want to go read all this stuff. I want to explain point for point. I don't know that it. It matters if no one's receptive. I don't know it matters if you're lost already, if you don't want to engage some of the time. And, and then again, thank you for those of you who sent the email that are asking me, where do I go look? Uh, thank you for being that interested to go look and continue. And um, I'm trying to back off on how much I give you. There's just a ton that you can learn. I've tried to, and I think I'm doing a better job at just saying, here, listen, start here, start here, and start here. For those of you that are interested. You're not going to get it the way I got it, but I'm going to give you what I can to show you the start of it. You want to, in fact, one of the requests is about property law. I couldn't find the facts of the or the evidence of the things I've read in the past. It's not available on the internet, so I I just decided, as I told you before, I think I'm just going to make it good here on one of the suggestions to somebody. Just go read that mining law. That's property law, folks. It's grants. And you want to focus on the grant and the relationship. Once you see that you'll realize what I'm saying about the, where the power is to stop this nonsense where we so-called say the UN's coming to take your stuff. It is, but it's not without remedy. It just takes you to understand to then have, find someone if it's not yours, because I'm not so good at it. All I talk about here is not so good for convincing people what the law actually is and what it's supposed to do. I actually offend people, apparently, that other people better positioned and better tempered, I guess, can do. And that's how I've told you I've had to work with it. I just tell other people that are much better at dealing with people. I deal with people like I'm talking to you. It's pretty straightforward. I don't really have a whole lot of time to think about and worry about it and wring my hands over certain things. If I see it in black and white, that's good enough for me. I don't worry about what other people say and that, or what other people think. And that, and when you get in bureaucracy and everybody wants to uh, coddle everybody uh, and wring their hands over how, who's going to be offended, that, I don't uh, somehow. I just can't even wire myself to get there. The answers are so quick, and I don't have the patience. And so someone else has to go that for me. And I've and I'm luckily I've got a couple couple of my colleagues that do that perfectly. Do that convey that information and you get the people in the seats of decision to understand what they're supposed to do and then you keep fortifying with the law and the facts and the point and keep focused and they start making the decisions that the that the, the tenth amendment of the constitution says was sitting in your local counties that the uh, title uh, excuse me 43 usc 1712 i think it is keep thinking 1710, but I think it's 1712 says that there's the gov federal government agencies have to seek out local plans they have to. And then if they're going to do something with federal funds and a major federal action, that's NEPA. That's a different thing, but it still sits there for a control structure. Because there's a balancing act that has to go on, and it favors man's production. Not his, not his conservation, his non-use. The answers are here. So and I get back to the point. I want to read this again. I don't know why i got to say that to you all. I don't want to read it because it, it, it takes a long time to read stuff through this. You hear all the players. When you read this stuff, you see the play, the blue ribbon panel. As soon as I see that, I know it's, we're gonna, it's a destruction. 
I don't need to see any more. Blue ribbon panels are destroyers. Advisory Council, destroyers. Advisory Committee, a destroyer. All integrated with the federal government inside the agency. It's not external under the constitutional powers. Your county is that. Not as a collaborator, not as a cooperating agency, which is a textbook that explains all this. Uh, not as a partner, but as a foreign government that has an authority that the federal government must seek out and meet. Where practicable, and I've used all this language before, it's not in this article, but where practicable means that the burden is now on the federal government to show they tried every, uh, you want to talk about alternatives? They've got to show the alternatives they used that they couldn't do anything when they tried, when they had to act contrary to the local need. Now, would you rather be on the side where you're just coddled and giving your opinion to an agency that can dismiss you? Or do you want to have the club that comes in and says, listen, you weren't supposed to do that. And when you did it that way, you were supposed to bring the reasons why, and you didn't. Whether or not it means you go to join it, I don't know. My point is that you you want to have, you want a club in your hand, or or you want to be clubbed by the club that you ain't in anyway. Come on. It, it's Anyway, so you get frustrated just thinking about this stuff. So they talk about all the terms, the conservation organizations, your educational institutions. That's the They want to bring all these uh, representatives of all these outdoor recreational retail manufacturing sector, the energy and automotive industries, the private landowners. Those are the ones they're subverting. Most people don't even know their own riot property rights. Educational institutions, conservation organizations, folks, these are the stakeholders. They're all clumped together into an advisory council that's still subject to the agency. And you as a property owner or a right to travel on the highways in the mountains or wherever on the public lands, you don't realize what your power is because you've handed it over to them and you've given, you've manufactured your, the consent that they wanted from you. You want to, you live in voluntarism? There it is. You just volunteered yourself right out of your access and your property and your future. For future generations, it ain't going to be you. All the words are here in this that she's uncovered, the author. Perfect to expose it, but we don't go to the fact, the point of how you stop it. I'm explaining how you start to stop it. Each one of you takes an interest in something out there in the public lands. And the East is not so much, but that's not the truth because there's still some places you can go that are still Forest Service managed or BLM managed. Any public area is this what I'm talking about. You were, we talk about and complain and wring our hands over the UN getting the UN business partners are involved, major corporations, and we want to be, oh, well, we let the, the, oh, it's a corporatocracy. You let it. Your local government let it. You, with the, as a beneficiary, let it. In this subject matter, you let it. Every one of you. UN non governmental organizations, NWF, AS, NSF, all these acronyms. They're all criminals, and you don't even call it out, and there's a mechanism, a couple of mechanisms to do that. So it's on us, folks. It's so simple. And so I responded to that. I think that came through um, Vinny, Vinny, uh, and uh, I appreciated seeing it. So thanks. I guess the secret is out. What was I talking about? The public-private partnerships, the U.N. going through the agencies as administrative advisory committees or councils. There's a whole law about advisory committees. For a whole law. Has anybody read it? I've talked to you about it. I've read it. i talked to you about it. In fact, it gave me a whole new insight. Did I know it was there before? No, but boy, it was sure powerful when I saw it. I can use the heck out of that thing. And we do. We do. So I, I, thanks. I guess the secret is out. With more ineffectual hand-wringing. And then I asked, but where have you heard about this years before and of what to do about it? Is a response I gave to a Twitter to Vinny, Vin E, Vincent Easley. Thank you very much. And not, haven't heard from you much, but uh, see you there. See you around. And I said Easley. The point is, is that you've heard it before. This is more people coming to the fact, confirming what I've been telling you for years, but everyone doesn't know what to do with it. And there's a th there's things that are doable with it. I hate that term, doable. You, you can do something with it. Our failure to do that or, or, or inform others that have the power and then work through their problem because this is, you know, look, good old boy systems in the system are difficult to deal with. In fact, there's a, there's a 
for some counties you can't deal with because this, this violation is so ingrained. So we've had to deal with other other counties that are more conducive. As I said, you all can do your vote harder nonsense, but in the reality of things, we're finding great work in getting people in that we can trust to be those right people. And then through that, getting working to get them into office or keeping them in office, as we were on five years of work, folks, was under threat in this midterm. We could have lost all the officials that uh, got elected into their positions that we've been working with. Uh, luckily, that didn't happen. Very narrow margins, though. So we're having a, we're watching maybe the, the last time, given we don't have any more energy put into those, to get something done by people who were put in, in office by votes. Because that's the reality. I said, I don't really care who gets in office. As long as they're going to follow the law, i got the law to show them. And i got to be there to do it. Or someone that's going to be like me that can do it. And so, vote harder, yeah. But there's a reality about this right now. We haven't figured out an alternative until right now. And, it's, and, that, and that's being used against us. So, you're voted not to vote or to vote for your... What you believe, well, so we heard lots of people saying, well, because this Republican candidate wasn't for non-abortion, I'm not going to vote for them, I'm going to vote for a third party. Well, well, how's that working for you, folks? You just put the candidate that you were not wanting to have the, uh, not, not wanting to see it back in power. This takes a different type of an approach. And there is a, yes, there's something about the, no, the lesser of evils, but if I said it's not just about choosing out lesser of evil, it's looking at a plan to succeed into the future. You replace it with less evil and less evil, less evil. Hopefully, hopefully, you do it immediately, like we've done in a couple places. You put people in office that are aren't evil. They may not be experienced and they may not know, but they're the ones that you can work with. And I've always told you, one commissioner, one one with the power of this of decision and the law is a majority. I don't care about their quorum, and I don't care about, well, I do care about the quorum because that has to exist, except the non-quorum and the non-action becomes their election. That can be moved to get them to a quorum. But once they're in a quorum, it doesn't matter about a vote. They're exposed to, the, those that would be contrary to the law are exposed for that. And one pri- part, one party going in, I don't care who they are, that wants to impose the law again, We'll win every every uh, discussion because it's not an argument. And if you don't win, now you've outed some criminals. That might take another ta- avenue. We've never had to have that done. As I tell you, how efficient this starts to become. So there's administrative requirements. Administrative. There's a reality about dealing with the reality. I don't like a much of it. It's 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 pretty pretty ugly work. It's grueling at some level as well. But it's necessary. Otherwise, these people run us down. And we're getting to being people who thought they were being run down. And I was trying to advise them uh, to do a better way. Whether or not they could ultimately defeat the point would, was not a question more than can they properly assert what is theirs to be protected. And we are now moving again with this uh, UN and the imposition uh, and the use of the stakeholders. And I, we went to stakeholders and stalking horses. And remember, we had uh, what was called... Um, well, Dapple, the, I don't remember the, South, I don't remember these things, folks. It's the, uh, the pipeline in, uh, the Dakotas of some sort. Anyway, the Indians there were having that problem. The water keepers, I said, be careful of those folks. Right, this is all costumes and false fronts going on. And we heard the attorneys who were representing that using that stalking horse in order to get a thing that they admitted wasn't going to be a full, wasn't going to fulfill even the, the requirements of the people of their expectations. They were being used. And I expect, I said, you can stop that, but you need to enter into the uh, reality of how to respond. But do it correctly. It'll put a demand on you to have to prove what and assert and prove and evidence your rights and your needs, but do it. And in the discussion, in fact, Vince Easley, he offered uh, insight into the laying of a pipe. I found that fascinating and found that relevant to what they should have said. It would have given them a new power. But nobody wanted to do that. No, everyone, I got vilified, lost lots of people, they don't want to listen to me no more. And you saw what happened up there. Well, it comes out again. Maybe this is an evidence that's coming out a little bit better, but as I looked at this, uh, I think something's going on. I'm not so sure what to say, except I want to show you an example here. Apparently in Montana, 
a Montana judge who we've I reported behind the woodshed was sounding sympathetic to the condition of laying the pipe has a, a what appears to be and although what appears to be a reversal on his prior or her prior decision I don't remember who it was a Montana judge puts the brakes on Keystone XL what am I speaking to I'm speaking about a reality of a process that goes on whether or not we want to vote harder and chastise that and just you know see I have reasons for myself why I don't vote I'm not I have my whole proof uh, in law about why that's not not a function. In fact, it kind of came through. What is your vote? They said it's a right. No, I, I've told you before, and it's in the law. It's an enfranchisement, isn't it? It's a public utility, isn't it? And that's not just one of the reasons. There's a status that comes along with that, and it's in that district. Back where? Back where it's supposed to be in the district. And so we've got a whole other thing in status shifting that for me is dangerous. In a way, I'm talking the way a status works within, let's say, the context of a case, a lawsuit, and who you are and what you are and how they perceive you and how what this rights you can claim and what you can't. So my, my view is a little more comprehensive than I'll talk about here. But those that are voting and think it's their right, their duty, whatever, are doing really are obligated by the time that they get there. And so you better vote harder. But I say come with a plan. Come with a plan to really move this thing through where it was supposed to go. Whether or not we can ever get away from this vote harder thing, I don't know. My feeling is if it doesn't matter, and it will hopefully in the future, maybe beyond me to do, it will be understood that the people in office really do have to have certain things to uphold. And for those of us and those of you that are have land or production rights or access to the highways and all that, it won't be a, a constant battle like it is right now. Where you do, you not only do you have to get people in that will make decisions, but you have to be there to inform them and make sure it all goes in the right direction. But a Montana judge, a Montana district judge ordered a, ordered a suspension of a construction work in the Keystone XL pipeline on the grounds that, that violations were made in the government's environmental review. So there it was, folks. This is what the outcome of the DAPL was, was ought to have been. If the Indians there and the people that were affecting the property, prop, the private property owners, could have put the right argument for. Here's the example that is possible, I guess, is one thing. But then we have the second paragraph, which shows tail the tape of what's really going on. And ultimately, there's another problem that creeps in here that I haven't really addressed. I've said it, but not addressed it. I don't know if it's addressable once the government does this and they're doing this a lot. And that is talking about the imperative of having to do a national security or the interests of the United Nations, the United States, uh, uh, and opposition to even the United Nations. But uh, in the second paragraph, it says, in a press release, the Center for Bio Biological Diversity, one of the staunchest opponents of the project, noted that TransCanada had not yet made final investment decisions on Keystone XL, and the latest court ruling might shake its belief that it is still a commercially viable project. Well, that's a focus, and that's a stock stakeholder, but the Center for Biological Diversity is the enemy here. And uh, I'm not talking in the context of pipelines and property rights. The property rights are a difficult one. But at the context of them being biological diversity relative to the, bio, the bio, um, biodiversity treaty, and you see that's a, really a fraud, an agreement. It's not actually a treaty that uh, you would want to have in your backyard. These people that are fighting on a false front are, are as problematic, telling me what's really going on. We're back to the DAPL and the, fault and the stakeholders uh, the, the, and the, and the uh, stocking horses. But the government has, uh, has asked the court to review, listen very carefully, its assessment and revise it, taking into account the changes in the oil markets since 2014, the latest in climate change, and the presence of cultural resources along the route of the pipeline that was planned to carry heavy oil from Alberta to U.S. refineries. Let me just stop there and go back, and this is pretty much the extent of what I want to read. They bring up a fraud, climate change. I almost wonder whether or not the judge has allowed that to finalize the question, because what is the new data on climate change? And I'm going to get to that, what the new data on climate change is. This may not be what they're talking about. What I want to point out here is that the Center for Biological Diversity wants to focus this on commerce. And and we can talk about it. It is, it is transportation, isn't it? But that's the other problem. It's transportation for what? It's the transportation for the life of the nation. And so they're backing up against a uh, really a not fully disclosed problem. They're telling half the story. If they want to back it into commercial viability, that may not be why you put a pipeline in. They believe that the price of the oil may change. 
they don't the price of the oil may be irrelevant and so while they may have brought this up i'm wondering i guess the the united states the government can answer that though the the market marketability is not an issue relative to infrastructure and so i'm just doing a quick little i don't know what they're going to do you're going to do a quick analysis but i think this is a false uh, front and a delay maybe an improper delay now let's go back to the cultural resources i have to guess but this time, instead of the Dakota problem, they actually brought some cultural resources that were viably um, disregarded. I don't know what it is, and I don't know what this point is, but that ought to have been looked at. And so there was a process, I guess, of the point here. There's a thing you need to do the way it needs to be done. And so this shows that, that there is ways to show. This isn't just a route for property owners. This is a difficult one to fight. I've told you about that. But I've also explained in the DAPL uh, programs, uh, the yeah, programming for you, trying to get you reprogrammed, but the DAPL broadcast, I explained how to put more checks and balances into the problem, uh, to address the problems if it's going to go inevitable, so to check the problems of the damages to the property around them. As, uh, again, uh, informed me uh, partially by uh, Vince Easley in being a guy who was in, involved with the pipe laying and inspection or whatever, watching how it's done or not done correctly, and the inspection that should be happening, and the more importantly, when we saw in the documentation, the undertakings that must be filed, like bonds, to protect against these things from uh, from the damages that we see, given they're going to go inevitable. Or you have a balance of your rights against some other property, right? Maybe there's some other property that could go, again, the practicability standard steps up, Again, if you don't know that this stuff is there, then you just start railing. You, you go out there and you get your arm blowed off because you're standing in front of a water can in the middle of freezing. You don't do all the stuff you're supposed to do. I say supposed to do, but that's been that's what we were born in to do. That's what we've somehow agreed to, and, and you're, you're complaining about it. This is going to change that until you effectively change it. And since until we do, I'm saying it's a lot more peaceful, a lot easier to do some of this stuff. If you're going to get run down anyway, you might as well make it the best deal you can get. Is that a compromise? Well, yeah, but at least you're fighting for all you could do. And you didn't do it with a lot of a lot of extra uh, fervor. You did it w focused on what was required. Because why? You went and read what the what the guidelines were. And so, what I was saying to the DAPL is apparently been uh, fulfilled here for the people in Montana. I don't know what this is going to go. I don't know what the answers are going to be. I don't know how much of an investment, uh, commercially viable investment for one company is going to be versus the infrastructure needs of two nations. So I'm not so sure that I buy, I buy into the, I'm not going to buy into anything the Pub Center for Biological Diversity says. That's a setup for a takedown for that. And that might be persuading people from actually looking at what their actual rights are to, to protect themselves. See, this is, I guess, the, my problem even with climate change. Okay, so climate is changing, and maybe it's a kind of an important matter that man is doing not Michael Mann, but actually men and women are doing. But if we're focusing a, on a hypothesis, on a model that's all fraudulent, we're not going to ever solve that problem, even if we were really the cause. And so let's go look at the, one of the aspects of this was the climate change. They threw that in there, folks. Now what, what New study, kind of funny, uh, this kind of gets me going a little bit about how, how easy it is to destroy this. Uh, people look at some of the work, and we found uh, in a report here, Major math error puts widely cited global warming study on ice. So if we go back to the judge's decision to bring, uh, okay, biodiversity, uh, you, you, you might make a point. Maybe there wasn't enough inter uh, much looking. We didn't take a hard enough look at climate change. Let's take a new look at the data. Well, the data says that there's no global warming. Think about that little trick. Judge may still be on the right side, but he wants to make sure the record's complete to stop all the whining and complaining that are false front whining. They do have to make a record that manufactures consent, even if it's lawful consent. As we understand land law and the rights and the domain, uh, the Fifth Amendment, the right of public taking uh, works. Am I liking the right of public taking? No. But that, if you understand the patent now and you start bringing that in, maybe you're going to have the higher, the higher evidence of the practicability standard not being able to meet to take you out. It may have to take the next guy out. They're going to have to start looking at where the least effect is going to be. And you bring up your patent and the estoppel about the, against the grantor because you know about all that, because you know about your property law. Maybe the, maybe your property doesn't get it. And you assert a bond requirement to protect you in any way, in any regard, if it's close enough. 
Why? Because these, these things are not perfect. The best available science of the placement of the pipe is not necessarily the best way to put the pipe. Nothing's guaranteed. And you start to learn about this thing, this environment we've been swimming in. We've never questioned the water. Why? I'm asking you to start questioning the water. Major math error puts widely cited global warming study on ice. Isn't that an interesting? Now the government gets to come back if they want to use this and say, oh, yeah, the math was wrong. What math? A widely circulated study which concluded the global warming is far worse than previously thought has been called into question by math error. What I found fascinating is how they kind of emoliorate the problem here. A Princeton scientist, Laura, Laurel Resplandi, and her researchers at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography concluded in October that the Earth's oceans have retained 60% more heat than previously thought of over the last 25 years and suggesting global warming was much worse than previously believed. Now, I can just tell you my head, I literally had to shake my head. I'm really disappointed because the Scripps Institute of Oceanography is where I, what I was really wanting to go when I was getting out of high school. Never got there. I really wanted to go there. This is like the epitome of going to oceanography uh, when learning was before it was even a thing. And so these, to have this information coming out of that, you just see the university system is useless to us, folks. But anyway, getting on to past my uh, my disappointment. The Washington Post, for example, reported the higher than expected amount of heat in the oceans means more heat is retained within the Earth's climate system each year rather than escaping into the into space. In essence, more heat in the ocean signals global warming is more advanced than scientists thought. And they go on and on and on and on. Unfortunately, different media sources went on and on and on about this. Unfortunately, the Princeton Scripps team, it appears that their report has been inaccurate. Experts say, folks, and this is the problem of having to do peer review and going down the track and not taking consensus, the, the felony against all of us, proving it again. There's so much here to talk about. The independent scientist Nick Lewis found the study had, quote, apparently, seriously, parenthetically, but surely inadvertent errors in the underlying calculations. Lewin's findings were quickly corroborated by another researcher. Enough said. My response to that on Twitter to memorialize my disgust. We don't need no stinking math. Said by a consensus criminals. So, here we have now, in my comment continuing, what's a university educated scientist to do? Surely? Roll my eyes. And ocean signals don't show causation or political uninadvertent AGW warming, AG warming. Ocean signals, the signals themselves don't show causation or a political global warming. See, global warming is a political term. Proving it also then proves that it's man-made. In other words, M-A-N, Michael Mann made this. They made this stuff up. This is UN inadvertent. This is a planned condition. And we're seeing the evidence of this when finally people, do, science does math. And I asked the question, how much damage are these educated types causing? Uh, rhetorical, we don't even need an answer. They're causing an extreme, you're watching the whole carbon market, the whole UN thing, the whole global governance coming on, the pipeline people themselves involved, the energy people involved. This is one big scam against people internationally. And so we can keep on giving lip service to these frauds. Surely it was inadvertent, folks. Or we can start using this as evidence to call out the whole thing. They don't mean us well as people. So when I see the judge saying we're going to go revisit the global assessment, oh, well, this one study that we were using, yeah, it was wrong. It shows you're right. We should have rechecked it. It shows that there's no global warming at all. Put the pipeline in. See how, it works, how that works, folks, how they set you up for the takedown? Now, now I'm more interested to protect the property owners that can be protected. But most of you all don't know about that. You all show up in a big room and be told uh, by some agency or some employee, by some attorney group or whatever, so claiming that they can protect you. They don't tell you anything about your actual property rights. They don't even know about it. They don't talk about it. They don't teach anybody about patents because that's not something that's supposed to be touched. There's no legal question over the patent your rights there. So they're not trained on it all. 
You ever thought about that, how that works out? The silence kills us, folks. That's why it's up to each one of us to assert what we understand is to be done. One of the main things, if you don't want to live in, you want to live in a society that where the peace, the peace is breached every time you turn around, well, don't call it out. And so we're revisiting some of this, but but not. I mean, it's just, okay, yeah, a lot of us will say, yeah, see, I knew global warming was no good. It was a big fraud. I'm not talking about it that way. I'm saying this is actually be used by the prior case to actually bring the pipeline in. But more importantly, this is math. There is a, the scientists don't seem to do. There you must be using common core math. This is evidence of the ongoing fraud. And it, that is everywhere. Look at your sp uh, your smart meters. Your consolidation, your, your concentration camp consolidation in smart cities, surveillance cities. The war against you folks, it's all part of this. Your lack of the UN, uh, the UN rules coming into the federal agencies for management, giving it over to, to, to organizations, private public partnerships like the biodiversity centers to manage to non-use. You don't think that's going to affect you locally, especially in the rural, the uh, countryside of the West where they need that production off the landscape, and the fires are caused because of the lack of that production. All because of this excuse by climate change, folks. Just that one addition in the pipeline case shows you, when you look at this other thing, the so-called math has been a problem. Surely that was inadvertent. Quit calling me Shirley. Does anybody have that in their mouth to say but more formally to the point of the process that is the distinction between DAPL and, and Montana. And I'm not saying that Montana has shut this down like the biodiversity thing and commerce. I don't know anything about that. I think it's still going to go through, but they're going to now be refining their report. And if you have an interest, you better be there to put your comment in uh, to for your part, is all I'm going to say. Otherwise, you're going to think you didn't have a say and the government always does wrong and all this other stuff. And they gave you every opportunity to protect yourself well, to the impracticability standard, if nothing else. Every property owner has something to protect. And I've been, and, I'm, and I can't find my book, and I couldn't find a reference to it, but my little red property book, not quite little, it was like a Bible, it was talked about property, it told me right up front, uh, there would probably be no need for law if you don't have property. So all these laws are relevant to some property somewhere, all of them fascinating conversation about that it took me six months working on that I don't I didn't appreciate what that was saying until about six months later and that's where you partly get what I say if you don't know about property you probably are so you got to learn to protect your own stuff and yourself and everything else now if they're using a law to uh, address you they're dealing with you as a property and you just might as well give fess up to that and then and deal with it on that level stop complaining about it so let's move on with this UN, and now we got a math error. Well, what else pops up? Turns out those stats about uh, our destroying the world's forests are totally fake. Well, I've had this story on my tab for weeks and months, months and months, but here we get to it. Turns out those stats, numbers, the math about uh, destroying the world's forests are totally fake. Well, I don't know. Go to California. Tell me how the forests are being destroyed. By the very people that are... Uh, mandated to protect them if you haven't figured out how this works. You've probably seen the hand-wringing headlines in one form or another. Human civilization is destroying forests, and of course it's all capitalism's fault. There's even a sanctimonious meme making the rounds that uh, paints Western existence as a life versus wealth. But the last tree is cut. When the last tree is cut, you, you will realize that you can't eat money. It isn't just heavy-handed social media posts that spread this view, the memification of our life. Recently, the BBC, Deborah Tabart from the Australian Koala Foundation noted that 85% of the world's forests are now gone. That's an alarming claim. 85% of forests gone? Well, go to Paradise, California. Go to Malibu. Tell me about whether or not their forests are gone and how now. Same people that were supposed to protect it, and the same society, the same communities that should have been known better to start protecting themselves, notwithstanding the 60 mile an hour blowtorch that they were for us suffering. Again, uh, paradise, I understand, was caused by PP, uh, the power company. 
when 14 out of 15 fires in California started by the power company, maybe the power company is a problem. When the government gives it license to do that, maybe the government's a problem. Maybe you need to step up. Maybe you need to start protecting yourselves against this, uh, this dereliction. But is that true? Well, it turns out, no. Luckily, that statement's incorrect, wrote Alexander C.R. Hammond. Uh, Hammond? Hammond's got put in jail for fire. Anyway, uh, who investigated the claim of human progress, you animals. Moreover, due to afforestation in the developed world, net deforestation has, also, uh, has almost ceased. Yeah, they're not cutting any trees, but afforestation is putting forests that don't, that weren't normally there, there. They're, again, not natural. So, again, the point is, is if you think that forest deforesting is a problem worldwide, they're claiming 85%, their, their math is wrong, folks. And then we can go through this over and over. This is the irritation I have. We have the evidence that we should have killed this a long time ago. And not enough of you all are stepping up to protect yourself. And we're trying where, where, where I'm at and where my colleagues in the, the major area that I'm involved with, we're attempting to bring the power back to the counties that the uh, UN article didn't talk about that brings it, that acknowledges the UN power uh, is here with their minions destroying us. And nobody here lifts a finger when it's so simple to do. But we're going to, we're trying to put through an emergency smoke ordinance in order to, in, it would just by chance, get rid of the fact that they're not cutting timber. It won't work directly, folks. You've got to learn how to play this game a little bit better. These people mean business. They mean to burn you out. They mean to put this wrong math, this common core math, in your life and destroy you by it. And it's going to happen until you engage. The government is not the problem. I see Grimner is not the problem. The government's not knowing it has the power to, to do what it needs to do against these invaders. In the way I'm looking at it and the way we work it, the government is not the problem. It's the lack of the fact of its proper implementation, having people that are meant to destroy us in the seats of decision that are harming us where I live. And all it takes that we found is one with the proper knowledge to assert the proper thing. Doesn't mean it goes lickety split, lightning. No, it takes a lot. As I call it, the bureaucratic goo takes its toll, and you have to be there to wash it clean. But it's not because we're not doing something, and it's not because, in this case, uh, the government's working on the backside of wrong. It's because the wrong people are in there that they're harming us. It's because of ignorance on our part that we don't understand. Again, the government is, I said last week, government is gone once you assert, let's say, like in property law, the patent against the uh, grantor or the one, uh, like the state that was duty-bound and undertake to undertake the protection of it. Relative to that land and that patent and the evidence of that patent, the government is gone. The government is irrelevant. And until we start learning about that part, uh, we're going well, we're going to continue down the path uh, that we start seeing freedom of being given to someone who gives to a GOP, uh, the wife of a GOP that does a work in med- medical work for people, uh, Jews in, in Israel. Thank you for tuning in today. Hope something I said helps you out, gets you started, makes you get focused on something. Grimner, thank you very much for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com. Appreciate all the help you do there, getting that stuff held out, a place for us to make this thing happen, get the word out every time. Thank you for anybody else that mirrors the uh, site. Again, I'm not getting, I don't get, I guess most, some of you don't don't favorite this broadcast. You must not like it. I must be going through millions of people who don't like it and don't come back or something because I'm not getting much response. But it all helps, I understand. So and thank you for the comment on uh, YouTube. I do appreciate that. And we're going to continue to do this. I'll try next week. Uh, tech diffs are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.